Chess, chess, sis, Uncle Jegs. I've clocked that some of you don't have access to the topic list that my school uses. Congratulations, you played yourself. So I'll be using the actual specification from now on. You can download my adapted version from the link in the description. The past two videos covered this section of the specification and now we are over here. Well then, let's chop some sense. <laughs> Here are the retrieval questions for this lesson. Do you know what to do? Platelets in your blood are the reasons for scabs and blood clots. Valves in your veins and your heart prevent backflow of blood. And the walls of your arteries are thick to withstand a high blood pressure within them. To help you appreciate the differences between human cells, bacteria and viruses, pre this picture here. The first thing you'll clock is that the two human cells are large compared to the bacteria, but stupid large compared to the virus. What's a neutrophil? Good question. Neutrophils are the most common type of white blood cells that you have inside your blood. They make up about 70% of your white blood cells. If you remember from my video on prefixes, a micrometer is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. That means that you move your decimal point 6 places to the left. This means that 25 micrometers is equal to 25 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. This is technically 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters because when we move our decimal to the left 6 times we have one less zero because our decimal place has skipped 2 numbers at the beginning rather than just one in our previous example. Now pause the video and try and do what we just did for the new run to both the E. coli and the virus. Use the 0.2 micrometer value for the virus. E. coli should be 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. This means that you should have 6 zeros in front of your 2 meters. The virus is a little bit trickier but hopefully you were able to clock that our number should be even smaller than the bacteria. Since I asked you to use the 0.2 micrometer value, you should have clocked that it's, it should be 10 times smaller. That means that we have an extra 0 to the left of our value. This means that 0.2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters which is technically 2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters will have 7 zeros in front of it. Here's a typical virus. It has surface proteins which it uses to identify and attach to a cell. These surface proteins are embedded in a lipid fatty layer, which is why soap is very effective at killing viruses. The same way how soap helps you wash greasy fat from your place is the same reason why soap essentially causes those viruses to burst. Inside we have the viral DNA or RNA which is injected into the nucleus of the host cell. Remember from the last video that roughly 8% of our DNA actually came from viruses. Click, click the card to check that one out. The first viral disease we're going to look at is measles. Now measles is super contagious. Let's show this by talking about a measurement called the R0. In simple terms, this is the number of people an infected person is expected to infect. As you can see, Ebola has an R0 of 2. So each infected person passes it on to roughly two people, who then pass it on to two other people. SARS has an R naught of four. So within two cycles, you have four people infected when it's Ebola and 16 people infected when it's SARS. Have a guess at measles. Just guess the number for the R naught. So what did you say? 5? 7? 10? My G is so much more than that. The R0 is 18. 18! If you, oh my, 18! 
If you know that your parents have not vaccinated you, Runaways. what that means is that the second cycle of measles from just one infected person, you have 324 people. Jesus Christ. <laughs> your uncle, how does the thing spread? I ain't about that life. It spreads through the air from coughs and sneezes. Like how we saw in the last lesson, that is droplets in the air, air droplets. The main symptoms are fever, rash, cough and red eyes. We all should have been vaccinated against measles via our MMR vaccine, which also vaccinates against mumps and rubella, hence the name, measles, mumps, rubella, MMR. However, due to a reduction in parents that vaccinate their children a few years ago, there have been outbreaks of mumps and other diseases that we ought to have vaccinated against. Pathogens, they're just laughing at us. I can imagine pathogens can't wait for parents like these. Hey y'all, come look at this. You think the risk of taking the vaccine is greater than the benefit? I personally do, yes. Even if I get my kid vaccinated, they're still at risk to get the whooping cough. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Let's look at this graph. We have two y-axes. The one on the left is the number of cases of measles and the one on the right is the percentage of children vaccinated. The x-axis shows the years going up to 2009. Bear that in mind because the trend is a little bit crazy nowadays. You may be asked a question like this that asks you to either describe or explain the graph. Or if the examiners are being cheeky, they'll ask you to do both. I've given you hints to help you translate the command words. Describe means what is the pattern on the graph showing? Literally, what can you see happening on the graph? Explain is when you give reasons for that pattern. Literally, why did that pattern occur? Pause and have a go. The number of cases of measles has decreased and the number of vaccinated children has increased. Depending on how many marks the question is, you may have to include values from your graph. Now, an explanation. Vaccinated children are unlikely to catch and spread the disease. When the majority of the population is vaccinated, they are then able to provide herd immunity. This is when vaccinated individuals essentially shield people that cannot get vaccinated. Look at the diagram. The vaccinated individuals are the blue dots. When the number of people vaccinated is low, the pathogen can easily spread quickly through these susceptible people. But when the number of vaccinated people is high, the infected individuals cannot pass it on to others. Why can't everyone just get vaccinated? We will look at vaccines in more detail in another lesson, but there are some individuals with very, very weak immune systems. This would make them very, very high risk in terms of getting vaccinated. Some individuals are also allergic to some vaccines, but this is very, very low in the population. Would you look at that? We've covered the first paragraph. Let's move on to HIV. HIV, which stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, spreads via sexual intercourse. or the exchange of bodily fluids, like when people share needles. This diagram here shows how HIV infects an individual. It looks like a lot, but just follow a clockwise manner and then you're good to go. Now have a go at these challenge questions. The surface protein on viruses matches the CD4 receptors on T lymphocytes. You can call T lymphocytes T cells for short. HIV can only bind to CD4 receptors and T cells are the only ones with CD4 receptors. Finally, someone can be naturally immune to HIV if they either don't have CD4 receptors on their T cells or the CD4 receptors have mutated into a different shape so the virus can't attach to it. This is essentially what's happening in some parts of Africa. A mutation in someone's CD4 receptor gene meant that the virus can't attach to it. 
this means that they're more likely to survive and reproduce and spread their useful genes. This is an example of natural selection. When your white blood cell count falls very, very low, you develop AIDS. How low though? If you have less than 200 T cells in a microliter of blood, then it's peak times for you, my G. The normal range is between 500 and 1,400 cells in every microliter. Putting this in perspective, a drop of water is roughly 50 microliters. So imagine a sample of blood 50 times smaller than a drop of water and that is a microliter. The usual symptoms for AIDS are shown here. People with AIDS tend to die from pneumonia if they are going to die. This is when their immune system has just been madly murked. Now, just one more paragraph to go. The tobacco mosaic virus, or TMV for short, is a strange looking virus. As stated in my video on why 5G doesn't cause coronavirus, this was the first virus to be isolated. It is made up of over 2000 of these protein subunits and has a long RNA strand in the middle of it. It spreads via direct contact or by vectors such as leaf hoppers and aphids. It not only affects tobacco plants but it also affects tomatoes. The left shows a healthy leaf and the right shows an infected leaf. Answer these challenge questions. Remember that the plant cells that are specialized for photosynthesis are called palisade cells. The virus reduces the amount of chloroplast, we can see that because the leaf is left screen, which reduces photosynthesis and therefore reduces the growth of the plant. And there it is! Lesson done! Check the description for the link to all of the content in the specification. I'll catch you guys in a bit.